Welcome back. Joe Biden wasn't the only new Democrat to jump into the 2020 race. Massachusetts Congressman Seth Moulton also threw his hat into the ring and in quite an interesting way. Just watch what he said this morning. Well, look, I'm the only candidate in this race who actually gets single payer health care because I made a commitment to continue getting my own health care at the VA uh, when I got elected to Congress. And I can tell you plenty of stories about how my health care at the VA with this socialized government system is not great. Very interesting. He really, really attacked Medicare for all, which I think is quite a brave position for a Democrat these days. But, uh, you know, very useful to President Trump in the arguments he's making. All right. With so many candidates, it's now up to 20. There's already signs the race could turn very nasty very quickly. We've seen uh, Warren attacking Biden. We've seen Bernie attacking Biden. We've seen Pete Buttigieg attacking Bernie. I mean, you know, it seems like they're all going for each other. What do we think? Well, none of them have to fear for their lives because Hillary Clinton is not in the race. So <laughs> as far as that goes, they are far safer. Yes, they might be a war of words, but if Hillary Clinton was in the race, I would fear for every single one of them. Not so. Uh, at the end of the day, they'll all fall in line. Right. But none of them are, to me, none of them are really contenders. Biden, Kamala, I think those are the only two. The rest of them, uh -huh. flavors of the VP. week. Yeah, yeah I think it's week. just a VP race at this point. And I think it was smart of Molten. Molten, yes, Molten. name. Yes, okay. Molten of Moulton to, you know, at least separate himself from the pack a little. Because the last time I was on the show, I said, you know, these guys are all going to have to outleft each other. So he's shifted more towards the center. Kamala is already doing that, by the way. So she's, she's playing the long game. She's smart. But there was a good way to kind of separate yourself from the pack. But I think Tommy's exactly right. At the end of the day, every single one of these people is going to have to fall in line, just like Bernie had to do last time. Yeah. Well, I think the uh, the one unexplored factor, I mean, we all know it, but the identity politics of the left, are, are, it's, it's going to be hard for Biden. He's not inter intersectional enough. With the one exception of, I think... Interse I think we need to have a little moment sure. to say... Sure, so to, intersectionality... To, 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 to the lowdown is, the, yeah, <laughs> Intersectionality is the, the sort of born in the left-wing academy, the view that you have, you sort yourself by your privilege with, uh, you know, white heterosexual males at the bottom and then varying levels of, of more oppression Because it's the intersection of yeah. varying types it's of It's the intersection oppression. of victimhood right. yeah. is what it is. Yeah. So it's you, how much of, how much have you been victimized yes. by others today? Yes, that's what it is. It's pandering but, Olympics. But there's yeah. one as, <laughs> one asterisk though, which I, I think the odds on favorite is Bernie. Uh, the populist angle will allow him to overcome that problem, and I think right now he's the odds on favorite. I just thought it was interesting. You know, the thing that the Seth Moulton thing, I didn't got no chance. I mean, like Eric Swalwell, seems to mm -hmm. me he's doing it literally oh, yeah, for him. personal. Yeah, Do you remember him? Exactly. Yeah. Just for oh. personal <laughs> publicity and raising his <laughs> profile. Yeah. Um, but but the. What it revealed, actually, that he was so clear and direct, Medicare for all is a disaster, he went on to be even more critical. You know, I got them with the wrong medicine, they messed up operations, is that it just reveals the rest of them are just sort of totally, like you said, pandering. Mm -hmm. They're, even the ones who clearly know it's a bad idea, they say, well, let's consider it, and, you know, the theory is good, but there's different... They're not, none of them are coming out and saying, come on. Well, that, well that's, that's why I think that... Trump is still going to run away with this 2020 because, like, we opened the show with this idea that Trump, he's, the way he speaks is so attractive because he, he doesn't use that di diplomatic, you know, BS. It's just straight talk. And the Democrats still have not caught up to that yet. So yeah. I, I don't think it's attractive to the voter the way they're talking. And oh I think God. the voter, the same way they caught it in 2016, they'll, they'll get it in 2020, too. Lost what, too. The only way the Democrats are going to win is by promising free things and adding dependence. <laughs> so free things by way of reparations, free things by way of entitlements, student loan forgiveness, and uh, adding dependence. Illegal immigrants, felons voting from behind bars, that's oh, all that, shot. Oh, that one. That was, uh, that was a beauty, as the president <laughs> would say. 